Hello to you all. This is about Betha Kerthi. And when I started to lecture at the Hogeschool van Amsterdam, the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences, in 1992, one of my first lectures was about a study from the ATBC trial, the Alpha Tocopherol Beta Carotene trial. And um, that is really the reason that I made this uh, tutorial to update you on a 30 year follow up from that study in relation to beta carotene. This is the publication in the New England Journal of Medicine from 1994. And this study started about eight years earlier and made a huge impact on the discussion about of the rel relevance of antioxidants in uh, prevention of all kinds of uh, diseases, but in this case, as prevention of lung cancer in male smokers. Several studies, epidemiological, cross-sectional studies, and animal studies have suggested that there were cancer pr protective effects uh, from bad carotene containing fruits and vegetables. And therefore, it was uh, the question whether beta carotene as one compound could actually uh, mimic this effect of fruits and vegetables. Therefore, the ATBC trial was designed, which is a randomized, double blind, placebo controlled primary prevention trial. And I'll show you some results of five to eight years of follow-up of that trial. They provided daily supplementation um, to re reduce lung and other forms of cancer. And they included 29,000 and more male smokers of 50 to 60 years of age in an area of southwestern Finland. They were randomized to four groups. Group one was alpha tocopherol, uh, provided 50 milligrams of uh, vitamin E on a daily basis. Beta carotene group, providing 20 milligrams of this compound per day. Group three received both of these supplements on a daily basis. And group four is the placebo group. In this table, uh, you can see the uh, baseline characteristics of the participants. Um, there are 15,000 uh, participants per group, which means in that in this two by two factorial design, uh, all participants taking alpha tocopherol and all that did not take the alpha tocopherol are being compared and the same is true for beta carotene. So all subjects are actually twice in this table. There are no real differences between the two subgroups. When we look at the serum concentrations of alpha tocopherol and beta carotene, and we'll just have a look at beta carotene. At baseline, the concentration was uh, 0.17 milligrams uh, per liter, which means 170 uh, micrograms per liter. After three years of supplementation, uh, in the beta carotene group, you see that the concentration went up to 3,000 microliters, uh, micrograms per liter. Sorry. <laughs> And um, remember this for a later slide, please. Here you can see still the 1994 um, outcome of lung cancer. We'll just look at the right hand figure for beta carotene, which you uh, 
can see that the lung cancer incidence is higher in the beta-carotene, therefore in the intervention group compared to the non-intervention group. If we look at the uh, number of cases, uh, just have a look at the right hand side for bethacarotene and just look at lung cancer in the upper panel. You can see that the black bar for bethacarotene group is larger than the non bethacarotene group in grey. And this is uh, after seven and a half years of follow up. And you can see it. The same here on the right hand side for instance for the third bar ischemic heart disease where you can see that the supplemented group with bethacarotene actually increases the number of uh, uh, ischemic heart disease uh, deaths um, after seven and a half years of supplementation. So the main result of the ATBC study was an increased lung cancer incidence in male smokers between 50 and 70 years old at baseline. And this had an enormous impact on our views of antioxidants in relation to disease. And together with the carrot study, um, the supplementation of especially beta carotene was rejected. As helpful. So 30 years later, after the baseline measurements of the ATBC study, we see a, a new study from Huang, which I will show you in the later uh, slide. They did a prospective serological analysis of 29,000 male smokers, which is essentially the whole group that started this study. Uh, because they took the baseline beta carotene levels uh, and analyzed them. They looked at 23,000, uh, almost 24,000 deaths after 31 years of follow up. Remember, these males were 50 to 70 years old at the beginning. What they analyzed was a five quintiles um, of baseline beta carotene level, quintile five being the highest quintile, and they uh, calculated hazard ratios uh, adjusted for major risk factors. What you can see in this table is the serum beta carotene in the five quintiles, and quintile three shows you 170 micrograms per liter for bethacarotene, which is according to the earlier table from the 1994 publication. Here you see the results from this study um, from Huang et al. in circulatory research in 2018. And um, according to quintiles, and remember, quintar 5 is the highest level of serum beta carotene at baseline. They show for overall mortality in the upper left panel that the highest level of beta carotene is associated with improved survival. So, this might be contrary to our expectations, but they show that baseline higher beta carotene levels is actually associated with improved outcome. And they also show this for uh, cardiovascular disease mortality, heart disease mortality, and stroke mortality. Unfortunately, they had, didn't have a, a figure for cancer, but this is probably largely comparable to overall mortality. So the results, in summary, really are that higher baseline serum carotene is associated with lower all-cause mortality. And that baseline serum beta carotene is associated with lower risk of death from cardiovascular disease, heart disease, stroke, cancer, respiratory disease, diabetes mellitus, injuries and accidents, and in fact all causes. 
if we have another look at serum bed precarity in relation to uh, overall and cause specific mortality, you can see, and we'll just have a look at the left hand upper panel for overall mortality, that uh, 170 micrograms per liter is a fairly low level of serum bed precarity and slightly higher levels for instance, 250 to 500, may be uh, better in the sense that it's associated with improved outcome. How this relates to levels of 3000 microliters, microgram per liters, as we showed you in the three uh, year intervention uh, table, uh, we don't know. This is just an analysis of baseline levels, ignoring actually uh, who's in the intervention receiving bad precarity supplements and who is not. This study now concludes, and this is still quite interesting because bad precarity levels were highly discussed uh, 25 years ago because of this uh, study in the New England Journal of Medicine. And from these baseline bethacaristine levels, they now conclude that this dose response association over a 30 year period supports greater fruit and vegetable consumption as a means to increase bethacaristine status and promote long levity. So, Bethacarotene might actually do some good, but not taken in the form of supplements, as we know quite well for a long time now, but in the form of fruits and vegetables. It might not be a popular reason, but fruit and vegetables should be consumed in greater amounts. Thank you for your attention. This is Peter Weiss. Uh, on the 30th of March, 2020. Thank you.